Google is one of the hardest company to join because a lots of people want to break into Google and have for the really good work-life balance and amazing food over there. And on top of that, also have an amazing innovation and also high paying job offer out there. However, even if lots of people already have years of product management experience and took them several times to integrate Google and find a break into Google, and maybe some of them even try multiple times, still not able to break into Google. In today's episode, I had a pleasure to invite Alex Tom, who is a product manager at Google, who is going to demystify his career path, how to break into Google so that you're able to make it happen as well. Make sure to stay until the end of this video where Alex is going to share with you his unique tips regarding how to break into fan companies as a product manager. Hey guys, this is Dr. Nancy Lee, a direct product feature in Forbes. I've helped thousands of people land a dream PM job offer in fan companies and unicorn startup and continue to get promoted as a product leader. In this channel, we talk about tech trends and free product management training. Like and subscribe to our new video every Tuesday. Hi, Alex. Welcome to the show. Hi, Nancy. How's it going? Doing very well. So I'm so excited to see uh, your career path actually evolving very quickly and jumping from one company to the other. And congratulations on your new role as a product manager at Google. Thank you very much. It's been a fun journey. Awesome. So today we have lots of audience very like eager to learn about how you break into Google, especially during today's very competitive job market. And also yourself have a long career break from very different background compared with most candidates. Um, so let's dive deeper today. Alex, can you quickly introduce yourself? Yes. Hi, my name is Alex Tang. I'm a product manager at Google. I have 15 years of experience in hardware, software, uh, development, as well as UI, UX, and product management. So I worked mostly in big companies like Broadcom, Apple, now Google in the US, and a group called CP Group in Asia. So I launched Apple Watch's health, fitness, and medical features from first generation until series four. That's five generations. I also worked on putting Apple Pay into public transits stations and convenience stores all over Japan. I also worked for startups like Wise Labs um, uh, is a sec home security company as well as crypto. So here mm -hmm. I am, Google, and I'm loving it. Hey, Alex, this is amazing. You have a, quite a resume. Now let's dive deeper regarding how you break into Google as a product manager. As you mentioned earlier, you work for really large companies such as Apple and as well as small startups. So I'm wondering, What's your unique path break into Google? Does how much of the actually those like large company or small startup company actually help you break into Google today? I would say that large companies taught me the domain expertise like Apple, and then smaller startups taught me the skill set to become a product manager. Can you elaborate bit more? For example, what do you learn at Apple? I assume based on what you told me earlier. You are a hardware engineer in Apple and build very impressive hardware product that everybody uses nowadays. So tell us how exactly those hardware experience is preparing you to get into Google as a product manager. Yes, I actually started off as software QA under the hardware department at Apple, and then I transitioned into hardware R&D. And then I left Apple as an engineering program manager for software algorithms. So I actually have experience both in hardware and software. Mm -hmm. Great. So what about your startup experience? So you were software engineer and then eventually I assume you learn product management through startups and eventually break into Google, right? So tell us more regarding how much startup actually helps you out. Yes, I so I I wanted to become a product manager when even when I was at Apple, but Apple doesn't have a product manager role back then. And then mm -hmm. so I left Apple and I wanted to join a product manager, but it was not a direct uh, transition because changing companies and changing roles were not as easy as I thought. So I went to a huge conglomerate in Asia to work as a UI UX uh, manager. And then um, at the, over there, I was working closely with McKenzie. And then I realized that a lot of the work that I was doing was actually product manager work and uh, consultant work. So, and mm -hmm. then back from Thailand and joined the uh, home security camera company called Wise Labs. That's where I was trying to break into a real product manager role. 
after I came back from Thailand and I found it not as easy as I thought. So I took Nancy's boot camp course when Nancy first started teaching. So, and then that helped me jump started into my product manager, first po- real product manager role at Wise Labs, for, uh, working on their uh, first super low cost smartwatch over there. Awesome. Actually, I know the CEO of Wise Labs, and many of my friends from MIT actually started the company. It's very exciting. Yes, Alex, you are one of my very first students at PM Accelerator yeah. years ago. This is so <laughs> exciting. Help you. Uh, jumpstart the career and also see you grow your career as well. But Alex, last time when we talked, you mentioned that actually your path to Google is not as easy as what others thought. And you mentioned that you actually tried multiple times interviewing Google and failed and get where you are. Can you tell us yeah. more regarding how severe the competition is? Why actually lots of people failed, and including yourself? Tell us more. We Most people didn't talk about this aspect. Yes. So I've been trying for Google since 2015. I was actually in an interview for a technical program manager role, which was Apple's engineering program manager role. And it, I did not do well because they were super technical. My first interview was with a senior software engineer. And they, he asked me a question, a technical question I did not prepare at all. That's where I failed. And then I tried a couple of times after that. And then because it's Google's questions are very interesting and difficult because there's no right answer and you don't know, really know what they will ask you. So it was not my first try. This time was definitely not my first try. And then I heard many people inside Google saying that they did not get it on the first try either. Yes, let's let's, let's dive deeper. And actually, I heard this <laughs> multiple times. And we have lots of students currently working for all the tier one companies, including Google, right? And lots of feedback from the recruiters. And they literally told the candidates saying that you need to really prepare for like two months um, because lots of people failed the first time, which kind of is uh, true. Yeah, it's very, very much true. And the interview process was one of the hardest and the longest interview process. It took me three months from the date of my application until my first day. It was exactly three months. So can you tell us more? What's a breakdown? What does three months look like and how hard the interview process is? So you will first start off with a recruiter call, which is pretty easy, casual, to just scope out if you're a decent match to the or even worth their time to talk to interview. And then you was a hiring manager. And then after the hiring manager, then you go uh, go on to the five rounds of on-site, which they will interview for six aspects. And then you they will send you a document about all the aspects they are going to ask you. Even if you just pass the on-site does not mean that you will pass the mythical uh, hiring committee round because that's yeah. totally and and separate from the on-site people. And then for that part, because they were so careful right now hiring people because headcount is so hard to get, they actually added four more casual chats after my on-site. So in total, together, I and I also had to do a presentation for my additional four rounds. So in total, I, I spent about 11 rounds of interview. Wow, 11 rounds of interview. That's way higher than what I thought. So let's dive deeper a little bit. And lots of people know the basics regarding, hey, Google is going to ask you questions regarding product design interview, product strategy interview. Hey, guys, we have lots of free training regarding product design, product strategy interview. And Alex and many thousands of managers just literally using lots of training we had. And we have lots of free ones on my YouTube channel. I'm also going to link it in the description of the show notes. You guys can start learning for free. For people listening to podcasts, we also have other mock interview examples. Also going to link it in the show notes as well. All right. So now, Alex, let's 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 assume this. We all know the basic part of the execution interview, um, part of strategy interview, and part of design interview. Tell us more regarding the hiring committee. Who is part of the hiring committee? Is it people in the same organization who hires you, or they are a, like like bar reserve of Amazon, you know, for the whole company? So what would it look like? I think it's a mythical organization that I'm not exactly sure until today, but from what I heard is that those are the people who was definitely not in the interview process, but they are probably from the same org or at least partnering org. And then they will look at your feedback very like completely independent from any 
yes, and make a judgment to see if you pass or not. That's what I heard. Yeah. So、uh, for the hiring committee, are they going to ask you behavior interview or is more product design questions again? Hiring committee never asked me. I still don't know who are the hiring committee for my role. So、huh. that's why I use the word mythical because、um, they don't even say that anymore. So, but then it's still there. So they will use purely the feedback that the interviewers typed back to make a call based on like a unbiased, completely unbiased and in- independent judgment on your candidacy. Wow. Mm-hmm. That sounds like black box. Who know what they are? Maybe they're AI. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so about that one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we shall see. Okay, so Alex, I also want to understand、mm-hmm. how did your past experience actually prepare you for Google? Um, because lots of our audience probably thinking, uh, he used to work for Apple. Probably so easy to jump from one company to the other. So. <laughs> Can you tell us more regarding how much Apple's experience prepare you, or any of your past experience prepare you for Google? And also, you mentioned you run product management outside of Apple. So how 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 it works? <laughs> tell us more. So the first thing is that、uh, I want I actually wanted to become a product manager even when I just graduated when Google EM first started, but then they never bothered with me because it was super competitive.、Mm-hmm. And then so I started to become an engineer, which is what I was good at. And then, so I slowly realized that my personality fits better and better as a product manager versus engineer because my personality. So I started to explore more, and then to learn what the role was and what do they do and all that stuff. And and then until、uh, at Apple, I learned all the knowledge, the domain expertise from both hardware and software. So and then I switched different roles. I jumped different roles. Within Apple, which also was very difficult to get as close to a product manager as possible, which was an engineering program manager, which is what、mm-hmm. they called the end. So, and then I realized Apple doesn't have product manager role because it was taken by executive and design. So then I realized I have to leave Apple to get the real product manager role, and then switching roles and switching company at the same time, it's not that easy. Well, hold on, hold on. You said Apple doesn't have a real product manager role. Tell us more. How did they create amazing product, iPhone, Apple Watch, all those impressive stuff? How did they do it? So Apple is extremely top down, as we know it, in terms of company、mm-hmm. culture in the Valley. So they have Steve Jobs was the most famous product manager in the in like you know in the tech history. So he started a type of culture that he executive. Will be the product manager at Apple, and then along with industrial design, which was、uh, or in design in general, which was Johnny Ive's organization, which now is split up into industrial design and uh, uh, HI, which is human interface for hardware and software. So、mm-hmm. I think that, and also they have marketing, which is extremely、uh, good at Apple. So I think they're kind of split it up into three different organizations for product man. Okay, so. In summary, there's no driver that literally is product manager is a CEO of product. We're sitting in between. <laughs> we we lead the team. We lead with authority. We align the vision and design the roadmap. So it looks like all other three organization mentioned they put on roadmap. So they don't need a product manager anymore. Yes. Um. They're starting to have product manager roles, from what I heard, because somebody I knew got into Apple. But it's still majority either. Part of marketing manager or engineering program manager. I think Apple is re- kind of bringing in real product manager role. They're trying, but I don't think it's they have a real product manager yet. Yeah, make lots of sense because right now Apple is pushing lots of AI element, right? So AI itself <laughs> is a software product. It's sitting inside it- of an iPhone, right? So you cannot just use a design or, or <laughs> like. CEO level of top-down methodology create AI product. Yes, I can see the trend. Apple start hire more real software product manager nowadays. Wow!、Mm-hmm. But this is a great lesson and learning、uh, methodology for all the audience. Thank you so much for sharing with all of us. No problem. Alex, let's continue your journey. 
So after Apple, clearly Apple didn't really teach you product management, but you really gain product management experience by breaking into Wise Labs, which is an IoT company, also has AI yeah. element in that smart camera. Yeah. And then you join a crypto company, crypto trading company, which is Circle. Yeah. And then you have a one-year career gap. So tell yeah. us more how you really like leverage your crypto experience joining Google. Did they really appreciate what you had in the past from Google perspective? To be honest with you, I don't think the crypto experience helped me any bit in mm. uh, joining Google because where I am right now, I work as a product manager for Pixel Watch, which was directly related to my Apple experience, plus the Wise Labs product manager experience. So I, it was a combination of my big tech knowledge and domain expertise, plus product management skills that got me into Google. Yeah, because I was also working on a very, probably the cheapest watch, uh, smart watch on the market at Wise Labs. I didn't know Wise Labs have a smart watch. They have a smart camera. They did watch as well. Yes, they their smart watch was only twenty dollars. So I went from the most expensive smart watch to the cheapest uh, smart watch in the in the. So, okay, so hey guys, this podcast is not sponsored by Wise Labs, uh, <laughs> but uh, Alex. Do you think people should give a try for those $20 cheapest smartwatch on the market? That sounds a very amazing product. Once it's available in the market, I'm going to buy and give a try myself and make a video or podcast about this for sure. And so okay. Alice, so sounds like your like circle crypto experience doesn't really help you break into Google. And, oh. But it also sounds like that experience and help you to become a better product manager because you are already a lead PM over there, and then you went into a career break. Can you mm-hmm. also give us some tips regarding how you really communicate about career breaks, or, or maybe emotionally, how you convince yourself having a career break is okay and rejoin the workforce? Because we do have lots of people out there, they are taking career break for family reasons, any other reasons out there. Mm-hmm. So with my career break, it was not by choice. Because of family reasons, I just could not focus on work anymore. I had to take time off to take care of family. So I thought if my next company would take my career break and use it against me, then it's probably not the company I want to join anyways. So during my Google interview, they did ask about my career break. And I told them very honestly, it was because of family reasons. And they never asked again. Perfect answer and great confidence. I do agree with you regarding your mindset. Interviewing candidates and interviewing companies is the same as like um, dating, right? You need to select yep. each other. If companies, oh, he took a career break. Well, family reasons, so what? You, you don't accept who I am. Maybe it's not the right company for me because there's so many different kind of fan company out there. You don't have to join exactly. that one, right? Perfect. Exactly. I love this mindset shift. Awesome. Thank you for sharing with us. Um, now, everybody, uh, let's also dive deeper regarding career advice for people who want to break into fan companies. And mm-hmm. I know, Al- Alex, you already work for two different fan companies. Do you have any advice re- uh, for other people who want to break into fan or any kind of tier one companies, maybe as a PM, maybe as program manager or product manager, what different type of roles in general? What's your advice out there for people break into fan companies? I would say that fan companies, they want somebody with experience and they're not shy to pay for those experienced people. So I broke into Apple as a new grad because I also had prior experience before I joined when I was in school. So I was interning for four years at at Broadcom uh, te- doing testing. So I started off as QA engineer and then they, they want people with experience. So I would say as, you know, to break into fan companies, have some experience that's related to the role that you apply for before you join, before you apply, so that you won't start off as ground zero. They want somebody with experience already, and they want somebody, especially for Apple, they want somebody to join and start working immediately. I see. So you mean the experience is more the domain knowledge, not necessarily the title, am I right? I think it's a combination of both. It could be, but depending on the role. Yeah, they do have new grad and also positions for people with no experience, but then uh, those are very rare. A new Great. grad are still available, but positions with zero experience is very unlikely at a fan company. 
when I talk about experiences that um, there are different experiences out there, you might, you are uniquely you. But some of your skills will be transferable to a fan company or to the position that you apply. It's that see how you can close the gap between your skills and what they're looking for. So it's, you have to kind of match what you can offer to what they're demanding. So if the demand and supply is matching, then your chances are much higher. So from what I learned when I was working with Nancy, it's that Nancy helped me to make my skills at that time to be more transferable to my current role and basically to align what I want to do much better than I was doing it on my own because I was very clueless on exactly what to do. So that's why even during my Google interview, I was still using Nancy's framework and I wrote them down and I tried to, you know, I tried mock interviewing using Nancy's framework and it actually worked pretty well. Awesome. So let me break it down for other people out there regarding the experience and title out there. So we have helped lots of you out there saying, hey, you have no experience at all. People saw they have no experience, for example, start a CEO or <laughs> someone who is maybe a program manager or engineer, they all think, oh, I don't have product management experience. However, <laughs> even if you're a software engineer, maybe a startup CEO, you have done a lot of things that are relevant to PM. That's why we are the transfer skills is coming. Yeah. That's what Alex said, like experience, yeah. no experience. But the number one thing, what everyone needs to understand is that in order to stand out from the competition, you must show <laughs> the future employer that you already have done something yeah. quite similar. So that's yeah. where the part of portfolio coming in. Hey guys, uh, to learn yeah. different kind of side project can work on to really add experience on your resume. So you guys can get started by go to www.pmaccelerator.io slash PM project list for you to get started, work on any kind of side project so they can add lots of value to your resume and interview experience. And literally even for APM roles, Alex mentioned earlier, on their job description, they say, hey, if you have prior startup experience or any related PM internship, we'd love to see those experience because those is going to help you stand out. So therefore, if you didn't get a chance to do an internship, whatever, start your own product portfolio starting from scratch. Yeah, so make sure to go to the uh, website I just mentioned, pmaccelerator.io slash PM project list to download those list of 13 projects and work on right away. And of course, I'm also link it in the description of this show note. So Alice, we have been talking a lot regarding growing our career together. What about <laughs> growing yourself and self-development and growth mindset? I personally believe that growth mindset is the number one most important thing everybody must master yes. so they can grow their yep. personal life, health, mental health, physical health, and career, of course. So uh, what do you think the importance of growth mindset and how do you grow yourself? Any recommendation regarding resources? Tell us more. So... Actually, you mentioned uh, growth mindset. The mm. book Mindset changed my life. I, I read it and then I realized that it's by Carol Dweck. And then I think even though the book is kind of aged, but I have to say it changed my life because that opened up before I was always thinking that, okay, this is limited, that is limited, that is limited. Mm -hmm. After I read that book, I felt like nothing is limited. And then so... After reading that book, and I started practicing growth mindset, and that's mm -hmm. where I'm just be like, oh my gosh, I was limiting myself too much. There was mm -hmm. too much self doubt, and so I was self uh, sabotaging myself because um, I thought I didn't have all that skill set, and that's where it opened up saying that I'm willing, I can, I can be anything. I can improve, even though I don't know something today, and that I can improve on myself to become better, to become more knowledgeable through learning and practicing. And then that's basically, I was very unwilling to pay for a lot of stuff. And that's where I jumped on uh, Nancy's bootcamp when she first started. And I learned great, a lot of skills, knowledge, uh, how to do things where I didn't, didn't know how to do. And it was very, and then I also joined other, I read even more books, like see, a couple books that really want mm -hmm. to, um, suggests is Mindset by Cal Dweck, Boundaries, the book Boundaries, yeah. as well as uh, what's the other book. And then um, actually I found A Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. That book was extremely funny and useful. Awesome. I'm going to link it in the description of the show notes. We will should start learning. I myself need to read the last one as well. It's the first time. <laughs> I heard yeah. about this. Yeah, I love sharing. 
all the learning. It's it's so much fun. I always describe this as life is a school. Everybody yes. will just keep learning, and it's so much fun. I think a lot of people actually give up early, saying that I cannot do this. Yes, maybe yeah. there's a gap between you and fan per manager job offers that pays you eight hundred thousand dollars per day. Yes. Uh, eight hundred thousand dollars per year, and yes, that yeah. that sounds like a big gap, but doesn't mean that you cannot make it happen, and you don't oh, need to yeah. go to Harvard, like the, those kind of schools, to make it happen. That so is, life is the journey of learning, and life is a school. Yeah. Life is also a process of never ending in self improvement. So I totally agree with that. I always thought to second you on that is that I always thought I needed an MBA from the top ten business school. To get mm -hmm. a part management, a part of management, no. and no, I did not. I did not until today. Uh, did I really fulfill that, that like you know that goal of mine? And then I think about it. I don't really need to because I'm already here. Exactly. Yeah. Only seven percent of Harvard MBA land a job as a product manager. So if you only want to use it for the purpose of landing a PM job, it's not necessary. But if yes. you want to use it to grow your Network, I think, is something people can consider yeah. investing in yourself. And、uh, it's、yeah. many different people can achieve their success through many different ways. And but I do <laughs> agree, you don't need to limit yourself. There's many different ways to learn and grow. Exactly. Yeah, I was just talking to a, a product manager、uh, manager at Google, and he was telling me how he was also able to transition. Following his previous role into product management via、uh, MBA, so that was I was just like, there are many routes that to to the goal that you want to reach. Just don't give up because it took me many years to get where I am right now, and、um, you can just keep going. This is awesome, Alex. Thank you so much for your inspiring ending message. Now, final question: How would people get in touch with you? You can find me on LinkedIn, so I respond on there too. I don't check it every day, but I do respond. Awesome, great. We're gonna also gonna link it in the description of the show notes. Thank you very much for joining us, Alex. Hey guys, this is Dr. Nancy Lee from PM Accelerator. Die. Oh, if you like any of the free content we provide today, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. We're gonna see you in our next episode right here. <laughs>